On this all-new episode of Nightlife, we sit down with Shea Theodore to discuss the push towards the playoffs. We knew teams were going to come hard, hard, and you know we've had some highs and we've had some lows as well. But you know I think our game, game right now, kind of leading into the, the the final stretch here, is in a good spot. And we relive the big win against the division rival Vancouver Canucks at T-Mobile Arena. Hannafin for the one-timer score. Noah Hannafin on the power play. His first for the Golden Knights to make it four to one. Plus. If you've ever wondered about hockey flow, Darren Millard has you covered. If you watch warm up, you'll still see players flying around with their hair blowing in the wind as it was grandfathered in, which means more than half the league is still eligible. All of that and more this week on Nightlife. defenseman in the NHL. Johnson trying to move it and Danar blocks the pass. Back to Stevenson and his stick lifted loose but Danar scores! Shea Theodore wide open to the top of the slot. Michael to Theodore. Rich shot score! Shea Theodore from out top on the power play. Michael drops for Theodore. Walks it in. Rich shot. Score! Michael in deep. Theodore his shot. Score! Welcome into this all new episode of Nightlife. It goes without saying that when Shea Theodore is on the ice, magic can happen. One of the Golden Knights leading defensemen, Shea's ability to move the puck is vital to the team's success. Having him back in the lineup while the VGK pushed towards another playoff berth has proved to be critical. We sat down with number 27 to discuss his roller coaster season and how he's ready to get back to the postseason. as the regular season starts to wind down here, curious how the season as defending Stanley Cup champions compared to maybe what you expected it to feel like. You know, I, I talked to, you know, Petro and, and Marty kind of before the season and they always said that the, the following season is always the hardest. You know, everyone, everyone has their best game and, you know, they, they, they want to prove themselves and, um, you know, obviously I think we've battled a ton of adversity so far, but um, you know, I think it's been challenging for sure. Has anything surprised you about it? Uh, no, no, I think it, kind of exactly what we expected. We knew, we knew teams were going to come hard, hard and, you know, we've had some highs and we've had some lows as well. But, um, you know, I think our game, game right now, kind of leading into the, the, the final stretch here is in a good spot. How would you describe the journey of this season for you? personally? Uh, it's been it's been tough obviously you know when you miss three months um, kind of right in the middle uh, it's hard for, for kind of a timing wise and um, you know I, I worked pretty hard with you know with our medical staff and you know the guys up in the gym you know they did a great job and um, just trying to trying to make sure I'm ready and you know finally starting to feel in a little bit of a groove. You've been ready. It's the games that you have played, you're basically at a point per game pace. Were you able to evaluate your season outside of that time that you've missed? Um, a little bit. Um, obviously, it's tough when you miss, miss, miss that much time. Um, you know, I think my, my game is, is definitely getting better here. And, um, you know, I, I don't always like to base it off just off points because I, I don't think that actually represents how you're playing. But um, it's good to see, you know, some numbers on the board for sure. What are those other things that you look for outside of the stat sheet? Just good, good defensive plays. I think I evaluate my game pretty honestly. Um, you know, I think there's definitely, definitely times where uh, I'm still getting up to speed and getting my legs back into it. Um, but you know, obviously coming back, we've we've had a ton of games right out of the gate since I've been back, and um, not too many back to backs. But you know, we're pretty much playing every other day down the stretch, and um, you know, just trying to maintain maintain my, my body and my, you know, my shape and, um, you know, trying to stay consistent. How are you different right now than you were at this point one year ago? Definitely, I, I feel like I've grown, I feel like I've grown a lot. Obviously, taking the experience of going to the finals and, you know, getting it done and getting the win definitely drives, drives, you know, myself and our whole group for this year. Obviously, you want to repeat and, 
um, you know, how much fun it was to, to battle with the guys and go all the way and, you know, be successful at the end. That's, that's a, a huge accomplishment. And, you know, I think uh, just something we're striving to do again this year. Do you guys still have those conversations about how much fun that was as you look to do it again? Yeah, um, you know, I think it, it'll come up here and there. Um, obviously, a lot of guys like to stay in the moment for sure. But um, I think, you know, at the end of the day, looking back that, you know, all the, all the hardships that we went through and, and the grinds that we went through, um, you know, it, it was all worth it. So I think you can kind of put that in the back of your head and, and just kind of remind yourself. You mentioned staying in the moment. Making the postseason is order of business number one, but how much do you pay attention to seeding and where you hope to finish? Um, yeah, obviously, you know, seeding is important. I think obviously, you know, right now we're, we're trying to maintain our spot. Um, you know, I think teams that teams that play play well down the stretch um, obviously you know when their game's in a good spot going into playoffs that's the most important thing um, you know we're not really looking for any matchup we're, we're looking to get in and just really try and play our best hockey going into playoffs time for our first break here on nightlife coming up next we take a look back at the dominant win on home ice against the Vancouver Canucks Barbershop across Marsha Saul Prime center and score The goal by the Canucks, the next shift, their own end. Eichel, so good at coming underneath, he starts this rush right to Barbershev, who finds Marsha Stoke. And then a great pass right to the slot at the top of the blue paint. Don't go anywhere. Nightlife on Scripps Sports will be right back. Welcome back to Nightlife. With the regular season coming to an end, the VGK are making a final push for a playoff spot. The Las Vegas Strip played host to a massive divisional matchup against the Vancouver Canucks, and Shea Theodore and the rest of the VGK were up for the challenge. The Golden Knights back at home here, Darren, after a terrific road trip. You mentioned seven of a possible eight points, their best road trip really of any length this season. These two teams have split two meetings this year and they meet at the Fortress tonight in a Pacific Division showdown. William Carlson picks it up. He'll jam it out. Comes back to Carlson. He has some room. Zips it up ahead. Dorothea in alone on the forehand and a save to Smith. road game since their last time here in a nine game homestand after that. Marsh is over the chance and he scores! That's 41 for Jonathan Marsh is and a 2 nothing lead. Great job by Theodore who's going to join the rush but all starts on the wall play. Barbership protects the puck backhand pass. Here's Theodore he's going to come in that drives the D back. That allows Marsh to take some more ice right past the blocker to Smith. And Jonathan Marshall makes this a 2 0 game, Vegas. Bolasar and Pedersen down low, pass out in front to Besser blocked. And Thompson trying to cover it, couldn't do it, score! Nils Hoaglander found the loose puck and puts it home to give the Canucks some life. Barbershev across, Marshall, trying to center and score! Goal by the Canucks, the next shift, their own end. Eichel, so good at coming underneath, he starts this rush right to Barbershev, who finds Marsha Stoke. And then a great pass right to the slot at the top of the blue paint. Hannafin backhands into Marsha Stoke, spins and feeds Eichel. Hannafin for the one-timer, score! Noah Hannafin on the power play, his first for the Golden Knights to make it four. Here's a good play by Hannafin, right to Marshall Stone, that high kind of pop-up play over to Eichel, right back to Hannafin, who lets it go. He walks in to this one, he creeps in from the blue line, good shot. Great play by Jack, you know, I thought the, uh, you know, the power play uh, was moving around pretty good there, and we, we got a good chance to execute, so we got to keep playing the way we're playing now and try for more. Old Knights in the midst of a power play change. Trangelo walking in, his shot, right from the fifth score, Carlson poked it in. 
the strengths, Anthony Mantha, 6'5", using his body. Bruce Cassidy mentioned this morning, he's so good along the wall. Watch how he shields the puck. Gets his back to everybody, gets the puck battle along with Marcia So Finds Alex Petrangelo as the shot go and squeaks through the Smith's pads. And William Carlson able to finish it off as he shovels it across the goal line. Time ticking away in the Canucks power play. Five seconds left. Garland to Hughes. Wrist shot score. Through traffic. It'll be a power play goal. There was one second left on the wall penalty as Quinn Hughes has made it 5-2. to two. I think we were playing pretty good, kind of stepped back in the second a little bit, but I think it's just uh, an effect of the score at that point. But a lot of power plays, a lot of penalty kills. We need a sharp third period and not give them anything. Now Hughes works his way back out high. Throws it towards the net, score! Quinn Hughes from distance through a screen. His second goal tonight. And Vancouver within two. Golasar with Howden. Golasar looking to Howden. Score! And the Golden Knights with another quick answer. Right away. 24 seconds. And six to three. And it's feeded into the Vancouver end. Golasar throws it on net. The Smith with one final save, and that's it. And the Golden Knights keep it rolling. Nine, two, and one in their last dozen. And a 6-3 win over the Canucks. Time for another break here on Nightlife. Coming up next, more of our conversation with Shea Theodore. You mentioned your parents. Your dad, Cam Theodore, went on the dad's trip. This is uh, Cam on Cam with uh, Joe Petro here. Uh, this is Cam on Cam with the Carrier machine here. You unfortunately were injured at the time, so you were not able to go, but that did not stop him. Can you pull back the curtain? What was that conversation like? Yeah, it, it was kind of funny. Bronco texted me. He was kind of like, is your dad going? So I texted him, I was like, are you going? And he said he's been waiting a year <laughs> since the last father's trip to go. Obviously he was going whether, whether I was going or not. Keep it locked. Nightlife on Scripps Sports will be right back. Welcome back to Nightlife. We rejoin our conversation with Shay and Ashley. You're a Vancouver boy. You play the, the hometown team a couple times in the stretch. They, of course, lead the division. How do you view the challenge of those games? Yeah, obviously they're a good team. They, they've had a lot of success. Um, you know, I think they're definitely challenging, you know, in different aspects from, you know, their decor, they're, they're offensively strong, you know, they, they play good style, good style of hockey and um, it's going to be a challenge for sure. But I think just going down the stretch, I think m measuring ourselves up where our game is at is, is going to be good because they're obviously a potential matchup for the playoffs. What do you like most about playing in Vancouver? Uh, it's fun. It's definitely a little nerve wracking. Um, it's always good having family and friends kind of come to the games and, you know, see my parents and, um, you know, all that, but uh, yeah, it's, it's just exciting for sure. You mentioned your parents. Your dad, Cam Theodore, went on the dad's trip. This is uh, Cam on Cam with uh, Joe Petro here. Uh, this is Cam on Cam with the Carrier machine here. Uh, bonjour, this is uh, Cam on Cam with an interview with uh, Nicholas Wong. Bonjour. You unfortunately were injured at the time, so you were not able to go, but that did not stop him. Can you pull back the curtain? What was that conversation like? Yeah, it, it was kind of funny. Um, you know, I, I got hurt and I, I don't know if the, the dad's trip was right in the middle of it. And I think it was the week before and Bronco texted me. He was kind of like, is your dad going? So I texted him, I was like, are you going? And he said, he's been waiting a year <laughs> since the last father's trip to go. Obviously he was going whether, whether I was going or not. And, um, you know, I think he, he, he always has fun. He always enjoys, enjoys those little time with the guys. and. Um, yeah, he, he wasn't missing it for the world. What was your reaction to that? Uh, I was just excited for him. Obviously, I was bummed that I couldn't couldn't be on the trip and couldn't travel with the team. But um, you know, anytime uh, anytime he can he can be around the guys. Uh, I know the guys uh, the guys have some good fun with him around. He certainly had fun. One of those stops was in St. Louis, and we were just back in St. Louis, and I wanted to show you. Fans had made this sign in St. Louis. Cam Theodore I, was a real event. Have you seen this? I saw that. Yeah, Gordo, Gordo showed me that, uh, which I think I think it's hilarious. 
but I guess it is what it is. You're okay with being the second yeah. favorite Theodore amongst, yeah, that's, amongst that's, UGK that's, fans? I guess that's the way it has to be. <laughs> I know you'll have a front row seat to everything throughout this final stretch. What are you most looking forward to? Um, I think just down the stretch, I think getting my own game, you know, in that spot leading into the postseason. Um, you know, I'm, I'm excited to get, you know, ha have the team playing well. I mean, we had a good road trip um, that we're coming off of and it seems like things are starting to click. Um, you know, guys are getting healthy and um, definitely an exciting time, you know, leading into that, that postseason. And last one for you, as much as the um, importance of these games gets amplified, does the pressure on you and Jack also get amplified? as the locker room DJs, because the vibes are extra important this time of year. It does. Um, you know, I think pressure's always there, whether you're running the music or not. Um, we, we've definitely battled some adversity with Wi-Fi connections and, <laughs> and you know, various, uh, various mixes. And, you know, it's been tough, you know, in some, some opposing ranks with the, the tough Wi-Fi signal and trying to scramble to get some tunes going. But, um, you know, I think Jack, Jack has stepped up in those times of need when I, when I start to panic. So he, he's, a, he's a good guy to lean on. Always battling through, Shay. Thanks for doing this. Thank you very much. Time for one final break here on Nightlife. Coming up next, Darren Millard puts his thinking cap on. NHL rules require every NHLer to wear a helmet. But did you know there is a way to see your favorite player with the flow flying free? Keep it locked. Nightlife on Script Sports will be right back. Welcome back to Nightlife. Have you ever wondered why some players wear helmets during warm-ups and why some don't? Hockey players are known for their flow, and warm-ups seem to be a great place to display it in all of its glory. However, as Darren Millard explains in this week's installment of Did You Know, it may come at a price. NHL rules require every NHLer to wear a helmet. But did you know there is a way to see your favorite player with the flow flying free? Helmets started to become popular in the early 1970s before becoming mandatory for players who entered the league after 1979. Craig McTavish was the last to go without protection in 1997. But that rule didn't force players to wear helmets in the pregame warmup, which means most guys opted to let it fly prior to puck drop. That has gradually started a change over the years, eventually leading the NHL to make buckets required in the pregame warmup in 2019. However, if you watch warmup, you'll still see players flying around with their hair blowing in the wind as it was grandfathered in, which means more than half the league is still eligible. My advice, get to the rink early, take in the pregame warmup and enjoy what will soon be a thing of the past. Shea Theodore is no stranger to the hair game. He and Alex Petrangelo lead perhaps one of the deepest defensive units in the game of hockey. We sat down with some of the group to talk about chemistry and how the group is bonded. You've had the, the six of you that make up the decor together for a bit now. How would you describe the bond between the six of you and what makes that work so well? It is a bond, actually. It's funny they say that. I was, I was going to use the exact same word. Um, playing a lot of teams, but I think this group really gets along. We enjoy each other's company on and off the ice, and I think we, we really understand each other's roles. I think that's an important thing. We all kind of know where we fit. And the important part for us is if somebody you know is hurt or, or whatnot or something needs to change, we can all play in every situation. I think we're just we're just a tight tight knit group. Um, we have a lot of personalities back here, but you know we have a lot of good players. You know everyone can skate, everyone can move the puck, and um, you know some guys that that step into the lanes and block block a lot of shots and you know kill penalties and, and do stuff like that. And you know everyone's committed. As a decor, we work well together. Everyone can play against anyone. Um, there's no egos. I think we know the role six guys, especially as the season goes on, and trusting six guys and, and I have to say six we have Huddy too who stepped in and played great for us so to have that depth is important because I think it alleviates the you know the difficult minutes as the season goes on so we can use everybody. It's just a chemistry thing um, you know obviously Huddy came in you know through various points of the season and played real well for us and 
um, you know, it, it just shows, you know, he's a character guy, you know, he, he never has a, never has a bad day. He's always got a smile on his face and, um, you know, he definitely, he, he definitely adds a different element to us as well. The younger guys on, on our D squad, they've turned into really good players. They're eager to learn and they're willing to learn. I think that's what's, you know, special working with those guys is um, they're willing to ask the right questions. They fit in, you know, really well with what we want to do. They certainly bring some energy. Every year you play, I think you understand your game a little bit better, right? I think that's that's how I felt as I matured. I think feel like, you know, as I got into my mid to late twenties as a defenseman is really when you start understanding who you are as a player, and I think that's kind of what you're seeing now. That does it for this week's episode of Nightlife. Make sure to tune in next week for the best nightlife moments of the season. Before we depart, however, we leave you with the best images of the week. Joel, do you have time to run up and just get a couple Joel, of drinks? Could you get a couple and of, a couple of drinks slices here for us? for us for after the game? And a slice of pizza would be nice, Joel. Darren Millard along with the Olympian Darren Elliott, a happy solar eclipse day. Bruce Cassidy compared him to a toy that you have to wait a little while to open. Hurdle will take the draw and win it. Hannafin straight away with a wrist shot. Score! Well, it's going to be the first point for the new goal tonight, I believe. Hurdle who wins the draw. Dorfee up ahead of Mantha with help coming. Mantha looking. Carlson back to Mantha and he scores! Beautiful passing play on the odd man rush. Inside the Vancouver zone. And a feed it in front. Eichel open, scores! Cross ice on the money to Brisson. Off to Carlson, has chance and he scores! William Carlson snaps it home. Eichel with a wrist shot, score! On hand, that'll be goals in three straight for Eichel. Chandler Stevenson flying to the net, backhand score! Beautiful finish. Colasar with Howden. Colasar looking.